Hi, I'm Nick with Maple Power Systems. Today I'm going to be doing um, uh, an overview of um, an upgrade I'm doing on uh, on our demo boat. So on this boat I originally had uh, two 120 amp um, power line uh, high output alternators. Those alternators got damaged and wanted to try something new. The initial, we'll say, view of this is it seems awfully complicated for, uh, for an alternator setup. Uh, but since we are charging a lithium bank, I have a three bank boat, I want to charge all three banks together. I do have two AGM banks and a lithium bank. So I'm going to do a few changes based on how I had the configuration before. I used to be charging each corresponding engine battery, which is an AGM. Then through those AGM batteries, I was going through a DC to DC charger that was then charging the lithium bank. So that way the lithiums were in no way connected directly to the alternator. So I wouldn't damage the alternators. Um, and the damage wasn't done due to anything about the system. The damage was done because the alternators got wet. So now I'm going to be showing some of the components that we got in. I'm trying um, two Electromax Voyager. Um, 120 amp alternators and so I'm going to go through the different components that we have here and um, Then I'll go through the overview of once I have it installed What the real complication was if there really was any or if it's much simpler than it seems But I'm sure that when I show you all the components going into it. It's going to seem Like a lot for an alternator. Oh, here's a setup. I'm just going to show one alternator. It's going to be a twin alternator setup Well, I guess one promoter. So that's why I only find the necessity to show one of the alternators. I have the second one over here in the box. But anyways, so going back to it, this is the um, Electromax Voyager 120 amp. I originally wanted to, I was originally planning to go step up to 140 amp. Uh, but since I do have a single V-belt pulley and I didn't want to convert to, uh, to serpentine, I, uh, I'm limited to 120 amps. That's what the belt can handle. So then what's going to make sense, we'll look at the, I'll hide this for now because we're going to go piece by piece. So directly connected to the alternator, I'm going to have my field control module, which nice and simple. So here in this connection, I have this harness that comes in. You can see the connector right over here. Then I have this cable that's going to connect over here on this side, which will then communicate to the battery control module. So the battery control module has surge protection feature built in. So it is designed for lithium batteries. When the BMS kicks out, it has a surge protection built in so it doesn't damage the alternator. Um, and this has a lot of monitoring to it. I'm gonna have to get it running, see what it looks like, um, see the kind of communication that I have. But at the end of the day, um, a lot's going through here. We're gonna have over here the different banks that we're connecting to. So here we're gonna have the engine. Uh, port side engine is gonna connect to A1 and that's gonna be the, um, I'm gonna have a single cable that goes um, from the from the battery, it's going to go from this post, from the battery to this post, from this post, it's going to go to the uh, to the starter and to the alternator, and that way, when I'm charging, when the alternator is running, it's also charging this battery. Same thing goes with the starboard side. That's how I understand it for right now. And then this will be the output to the house. It's going to go through once again that field control module, the field control module. Um, to the alternator is what's going to regulate. Um, so then I have the system control module, which is where those smaller cables, this cable here with the uh, with the green connection, with the green heat shrink on it, right there. That's going to go from this field control module over here to the system control module. 
system control module will show me amperage of the system is going to show me um, the net of what I'm putting in versus what's going out of it and the way it reads that is you have all your negative connections inputs and outputs right over here on these six posts and they're even monitoring the loads on the uh, on the uh, positive side so from here from here to here, I can either have a battery switch or a jumper if you have a battery switch before there's a disconnect button. And then all your loads and inputs get connected on these posts over here. That way this device can read. And the concept behind this is if you're charging at a very high rate um, between these two devices, they'll know how much amperage you're putting in on lithium batteries, we're gonna run into certain limitations as far as how much we can charge, especially when I'm dealing with 220 amp alternators. On top of the 120 amp alternators, I have a 150 amp charger on the boat. So I have 240, 150, 390. Um, although the battery banks on the boat are capable of handling that much, um, I'm going to limit them down to 350. And so that way, if this senses, so if this senses that the, uh, that the amperage, the incoming amperage is higher than that, it's going to throttle back the alternators to not cause harm to the batteries. Now, all of it seems super interesting. It's a little overwhelming to see all of this when I'm going through the wiring schematic here. Once again, it looks like a whole DC system when we're talking about just the alternator setup versus my the existing power line so you can see it's really in bad shape. So the existing power line, all it had was connection to the uh, connection to the battery to charge its starting battery and then I had an external regulator that was connected to it. It was two devices. It was pretty clean and clear. This is also very clear. The instructions make a lot of sense, but it's just, it looks like a lot of devices to be controlling an alternator. Although I'm supposed to be getting significantly more output um, from this 120 amp alternator at lower speeds than I was getting out of the power line. The power line, I was seeing somewhere in the ballpark of about 30 amps per engine at, um, at about 800 RPMs. This alternator, I'm expecting to be seeing something closer to uh, 60 amps at the same 800 RPMs. So I'll get this all together. This is just a quick overview just to show the different devices in here. I know it looks overwhelming. Um, but let's see how it all goes together. Let's see how this works, and then we'll, uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, so I just made a mistake in what I was talking about. I just mentioned that I was... Um, that I had Voyager series alternators and I don't know where I got that from Look at the box what I actually have is The Aquamax FM 12 120s So Aquamax, I don't know where I came with Voyager, but it's not Voyager. It's Aquamax They are 12 volt alternators 120 amps a piece 